Hi, my name is Griffin Boyce, and I just want to give a brief overview of my project called Cupcake. Um, so what is Cupcake? Well, it's a suite of apps and browser extensions that allow you to create tour bridges without actually having to download and then install Vidalia or other software. This is really useful if you have a Chromebook or another lightweight environment where you don't want to actually download or install or root your device. Um, and the bridges that this type of application makes um, are given to people who would otherwise be blocked from accessing the Tor network entirely. Um, frequently China and heavily oppressed areas where bridges tend to burn out really fast. Alright, so what is the data behind this? So I'm just going to go into the size of the Tor network right now um, and then go into what the, uh, what the actual projects for Cupcake are. So right now the Tor network is between 500,000 and 900,000 users connecting every day and that's not always the same group of users so it could be someone's only connecting once a week or once a month so there's not a really easy way to figure out how large the uh, the user base is for Tor. But we do know that 25,000 users connect every day via bridges um, and that sounds really amazing but there are only 3,800 total nodes in the network and only 1,800 of those are bridges, and that, that's not including the roughly 700 bridges created through various uh, Cupcake applications and extensions. Um, right now, as you can really tell, Cupcake users are starting to represent a really big chunk of the Tor network, and while that does sound like I'm bragging a little bit, it's actually a really bad thing, and I'll get into that a little bit later. Cupcake Bridge is the extension for Chrome, and right now it has 677 users um, through the Google app, uh, Google Web Store, and um, an unknown number of people are installing it from the GitHub page. It's very light, and as I said, it's Chromebook compatible. Um, if you install it, you'll be transporting roughly 15 megabytes of data over uh, the it, well, rather into the Tor network every single day. Um, and right now this represents about 28% of all Tor bridges, which is quite a lot. Um, and there are plans for me to extend that into Firefox. I just accidentally haven't got around to it yet. Um, there are also WordPress and Drupal plugins. Just like the Chrome extension, these are really easy to install. Um, basically you just drag and drop the PHP files into your either either uh, plugins or modules part of your website, um, go into your admin section and uh, click update. So the problem with this is that visitors to your website must opt out if they want to not be bridges. So there's an interesting discussion around agency and consent on the internet. Um, you know, and I could give some sort of larger soliloquy on this, but I think that I, I probably will not. <laughs> um, then there are Tumblr themes. Um, even unpopular themes get thousands and frequently hundreds of thousands of users. And you can multiply that times the number of people that are just randomly visiting the Tumblr, um, and those people all wind up becoming bridges. Um, these grow very organically. Um, and so after seeing an awesome blog theme and choosing to install it, you've already looked through everything, you're looking at the code, you're making sure that it's something that you want, and you can tell that um, it has the little cupcake badge at the very bottom. Um, and this is a basic example. As you can see in the bottom, it's so tiny, um, but I add some text to the side to actually let people know that, hey, it's doing something extra and maybe you should pay attention to this. Um, the really sweet part about running this on my Tumblr theme right now is that, you know, my Tumblr theme is of no consequence. It's all pop culture and terrible landscapes covered in terrible quotes. Um, but the really great part about it is that when the CIA visits my blog, they briefly become part of the Tor network, which I think is really funny. So I created a Facebook app. Um, this was a bit of an experiment, and I really didn't expect it to succeed. In the end, it sort of succeeded, and occasionally both has a user and makes a bridge at the same time. Um, you know, Facebook has switched almost all of their traffic to being over HTTPS, which is absolutely wonderful for their users, um, but it makes it very, po very uh, improbable to make a WebSocket connection um, because unfortunately we can't use secure WebSocket connections right now and I will actually get into that a tiny bit later. Facebook is actually really difficult to set up because they're so incompatible with common NGINX 
uh, server deployments. Um, I could pretty much write an entire book about it called How to Piss Off All Your Developers All of the Time Forever. So future development plans. Um, you know, I've tried a lot of things that didn't work and a lot of things that did. And so right now the idea is to go forward with um, a Firefox add-on, um, games in HTML and JavaScript, you know, release it under a Creative Commons license and hopefully they will spread. Um, also the possibility of creating something for mobile, but trying to artificially rate limit something on a mobile device can be really tricky because if someone's over, you know, 3G and they're only getting like, you know, 20 kilobytes a second, you don't want to them to become a bridge and then be limiting um, all these at-risk people to some crazy small amount of traffic um, bandwidth. It would be great if flash proxies and pluggable transports in general could make secure WebSocket connections. Um, this is actually very difficult from a network engineering standpoint, but it's really so worth it to get involved with this. Now granted, it does require you to work with Tor developers, but they really aren't as terrifying as they let on. Really, I promise. Earlier I said that Cupcake users are becoming a large part of the overall Tor network. And this is true. This is also kind of bad. Um, so I really want people to be my competition. The network thrives on diversity. Um, if one person is controlling a large portion of the Tor network, whether it's in bridges or um, exit nodes or you know middle relays, um, that actually tends to be kind of bad. So I would like more people to get involved, um, you know, branch my code, create code of your own, and sort of be my competitor and um, run a portion of the Tor network on your own as well. The awkward part about this is that even if I do nothing, the number of cupcake bridges will eclipse all of their nodes in the Tor network. And it's not unlikely that um, flash proxy projects as a whole will bring in hundreds of thousands of bridges on a daily basis. Um, so I would love it if there were lots of people running this and that way, you know, if something happens to me or, uh, you know, the unthinkable happens and I lose interest in this project, that there are other people that will continue this work and allow it to grow more organically. And that's all I said. So there's my email. You can reach me on Twitter at Abdidum. Um, I'm on GitHub as Glamrock. And that's the link to the Stanford Crypto Lab where uh, Flash Proxy was originally developed. And I rely on a lot of their back end code for my implementation. So seriously, major props to them. Um, for my Facebook app, I actually got the game engine code, uh, which was in JavaScript from Nadim Kobesi, who is very wonderful and allowed me to use that on that project. And um, overall, you know, I just want to say thanks for listening to me ramble for eight and a half minutes. Thanks. Bye bye.